Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whenever you are watching this service. Welcome to our service of Holy Communion from the Book of Common Prayer, coming to you uh, from uh, the family of St. Paul's in St. Albans. Uh, today is All Saints Day, so if you're a saint, if you are a follower of Christ, it's your day today so you can celebrate that. My name is Peter Crumpler. I am Associate Minister at St Paul's in St Albans. Uh, in a moment Nick and Judy will be uh, leading our sun worship uh, and then Jackie Hunter will be uh, reading to us and later Andre, our Associate uh, Vicar, will be bringing us a message based on Ephesians 1 about our identity in Christ and that's a theme that we've been following. And so first of all over to Judy and to Nick. service begins with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we might perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we join in the words of the Lord's commandment. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them nor worship them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands in them that love me, and keep my commandments. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless, that taketh his name in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shalt thou labour and do all that thou hast to do. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no manner of work. Thou and thy son and thy daughter, thy manservant and thy maidservant, thy cattle and the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Lord, have mercy upon us and decline our hearts to keep this law. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his servant, nor his maid, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is his. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and governance, and that thou dost disperse, dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee, so to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth thy servant, our Queen and Governor, that in all her thoughts, words and works she may ever speak, ever seek thy honour and glory, and study to preserve thy people committed to her charge, in wealth, peace and godliness. Grant this, O merciful Father, for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today, for All Saints' Day. O Almighty God, who hast knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, 
that we may come to those unspeakable joys which thou hast prepared for them that unfeignedly love thee. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our readings. The Old Testament reading is Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise for spiritual blessings in Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. To be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory, thanksgiving and prayer. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, at every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. Our Gospel reading comes from the 11th chapter of John's Gospel, reading verses 32 to 44. It's the, the story of the raising of Lazarus. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in spirit 
and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord said, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth round his face. And Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Amen. And now we join in the words of the Creed, declaring the faith that we share. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now Andre is going to bring us our word this morning. So my name is Andre Radmol. I'm the Associate Vicar here at St Paul's Church and we've been doing a series on the topic of identity this month and in this talk today I'm going to wrap up some of the themes that we've been covering in this series. We are different people depending on the role that we're playing and depending on who we're with at the time. So I am a husband, I've done the dishwasher and I've only gone and put the bins out. I am a friend. Want to go for a coffee? I am a therapist. How does that make you feel? I am an actor. To be or not to be? Yeah, that is the question. I am a vicar. So turn with me in your Bibles to page 462 in the Church Bible. And sometimes I'm confident. Anything's possible if you just dream big enough. And sometimes I'm shy. Oh, I'm just a bit busy. 
all of these different aspects, and that's just some of them, are all who I am. We've just seen different fragments of my life, and they're not all of the fragments that we could have looked at. Am I a vicar? Am I a therapist? Am I a husband? Am I a friend? I'm all of those things and more. And I've been occupying those different roles through my life at different stages. And this is true for all of us, that we all live our lives playing out different roles all of the time. It's quite normal. Now in this sermon series, through the whole of October, we've been thinking about what it means to be in Christ. And the first thing I want to say about this is that being in Christ doesn't mean that we lose our individuality or the specific nature of our own lives. So all of those different roles that we play, they continue to be played out. And I think sometimes we can have this kind of idea that being in Christ is somehow to be a bit perfect, to be uh, very holy, um, very on top of all the problems, maybe not to have any problems. But the, the truth of the matter, as we know, is that in life there's ups and downs, there's good bits and bad bits, things that we really struggle with, things that we might feel quite bad about even in ourselves. And yet, these different facets are a bit like, I, I would say it's actually a bit like a stained glass window. So if you think of a stained glass window, we've got some at St Paul's, the light comes through those scenes in the stained glass, and different windows in churches will have all sorts of different stories in them, often from the Bible, of course, but it's the same light that comes through them from the other side and illuminates them. And I think it's really like that in our own lives, which is to say, we'll have very specific things that we are doing, different things that we are focused on in our own life story, but it's the same light that comes through and actually, I think that in Christ, these aspects of our lives become illuminated, they become lit up, and they also somehow come together as a whole. And that's just thinking about us individually, that as individuals we have these different facets, like a diamond really, and through that, the light of Christ shines. So Christ in your form will be different to Christ in my form, but it will still be the salt and light of Christ in the world, expressed in a very unique way. And I, the reason I say this is because in the past I used to think, this is crazy, I'm doing all these different sorts of things. Going to the hairdressers was always an exciting adventure because they always ask, what do you do for a living? And I'd be like, well, once I said uh, I was a therapist, I made that mistake just once. Uh, because the person that was doing my hair said, well, they basically gave me their kind of life story about how they'd been kind of um, taken into the circus uh, and they'd been in another part of the world for a while and then they got back out of the circus and what they did in the circus and, and all of this kind of outpouring while I was having my hair cut in Barnet, like my Barnet cut in Barnet, I suppose. Anyway, that is what can happen when people define us by our roles. And isn't that what happens in society, that we get so easily pigeonholed and defined by the titles, the roles, the relationships that we have. And I think it's really important to, to remember that actually Christ sees us as multifaceted. And I came to the conclusion uh, a few years ago now that it was okay to be an actor, to be a writer, to be a vicar, to be a, uh, yeah, as well as being a husband, a father, and those kind of relational uh, titles or roles, because it's okay to be multifaceted. We don't have to be just one thing, and we certainly don't need to let the world around us define us and narrow us down into just one definition, and that's the only thing we can be. I think as Christians, we can actually kind of push back against that, in fact. 
So that's the first thing that I want to say about this idea of being in Christ is that it's multifaceted and it is multicoloured and the light of Christ shines through all of us in unique ways. Second thing to say is that it isn't actually an individual pursuit. That when we're thinking about being in Christ and what that means, we're talking about our own individual experience of, as we read in Ephesians 1, of being adopted, of being beloved, of being chosen, of being wanted, of being included, but it's also an experience that we share with other people in the body of Christ. So the body of Christ is made up of very many different parts, as Paul writes about elsewhere in his letters. So for me to be fully realised as being in Christ isn't a solo pursuit. It actually happens in relationship to others who are in the body of Christ. And this gets into the whole question of church and how important church is, because it's in the context of church that we can experience the fullness of being in Christ because that incorporates everybody else as well. It's a very inclusive, hospitable idea that it's not just us doing something on our own, but it's us and all of the other people around us as well. Now, that doesn't mean we always get on with each other. It doesn't mean that we always see things the same way or agree on everything. But it, that multiplicity and that, those multiple kind of uh, angles really go to make up this whole thing, which I would describe as being in Christ. And then the final thing that I want to say about this is that in my experience in church life, it's very easy to kind of fall into a, a pattern of striving really hard to get it right. And in a way, that's quite um, an understandable motivation that we want to be more Christ-like. But there is a right and a wrong way of doing that, I think. And what I've found not helpful is just trying harder and then failing and then feeling awful about myself. So. I think that we can easily get trapped in a cycle of feeling like we're a bad Christian. We compare ourselves with other people, which is a bit of a toxic habit that we have in our society at the moment, particularly in things like Instagram world, where we compare our lives with those glossy, wonderful lives that other people might be apparently leading and think, well, we're just not doing good enough. I think the same thing happens for Christians, is we think, if only I prayed more, if only I read the Bible more, if only I went to church more, if only I worshipped more, if only I did this, that and the other, went to this conference or whatever, that we would be somehow transformed into being more like the likeness of Christ. I don't think it's so much about what we put on ourselves. I think it's a bit more to do with actually finding the Christ that is within us already. So a way I've heard this described is it's a bit like uh, if you imagine a kind of master painting, um, something that's a few hundred years old, but it's been obscured by the kind of muck and the dirt and, uh, and the ages that have gone on over hundreds of years, maybe. And what restorers do is they, they get hold of that kind of painting and they start to very gently brush off all the stuff that's got accumulated on top of the original artwork. And what that does is it reveals, little bit by little bit, what was originally there in all its glory. And I think that's what kind of landing in this position of being in Christ is all about. It's not kind of that we have to so much go out there and try and add more things to our menu that we have to be doing. It's more about kind of realising that what it says in passages like Ephesians 1, verse 1 to 17 is true. That we are beloved. And that means that we can be loved. Allowing ourselves to be loved as the beloved is an antidote actually to issues around low self-esteem or low confidence or just feeling bad about ourselves, because he doesn't see us like that. But I would say in my experience, it takes a bit of time 
and it's still a process that I'm on at the moment and probably always will be to just soak in that place of being accepted, loved and included, adopted would be another word, in Christ. And it isn't dependent on me ticking the right boxes, getting it all right, passing the right tests, being a good enough Christian. It's dependent on something that Jesus did 2000 years ago on the cross and the resurrection, which actually ushers in a completely new life for all of us. So as we think about this whole topic and we're drawing it to a close this week, I would want to challenge us to think, am I, where am I at with this? Do I believe what it says here in Ephesians that I'm beloved, I'm chosen, I'm loved? Because that, I think, is the foundation for being in Christ. That's the ground level for everything else that happens. Before we do anything, it's just resting in that truth. And so my challenge for me, as much as it is for all of us, is will we take some time to just rest in that truth? To just be in that place and to accept what it says in the word and let it sink into us richly and to affect all of our lives and of course shine through in all of the roles and relationships that we have. Thanks for listening. And so we come to our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that our identity is in Christ that over and above all the different roles and relationships that we have, that we are rooted in you, that we can look to you and see your face smiling upon us, shining on us as we are your saints, your children, seeking to follow you pray you would lead us and guide us and that we might live in the reality of being your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world today and particularly as on this day in Glasgow people are gathering world leaders from right around the world for this major environmental conference. We pray for all the decisions that will be made, all the deliberations that will take place, all the meetings, all the discussions, all the resolutions. And we pray for our for wisdom uh, amongst those leaders, that they may be aware of the urgency of the crisis facing our world and may have the courage to take action to help us to get through this crisis and to thrive as a people and we pray that decisions they take may be based on justice for all that all nations that all nations may thrive in the years ahead lord in your mercy here our prayer. We pray for our leaders of this nation, for the government, for the opposition parties. We pray for all MPs. Pray particularly for Daisy Cooper and for Bim Afalami, who serve us here in St Albans, that you would give them wisdom and integrity and courage and insights to seek to do what is right and what is just. We pray for all those who serve us, all our elected officials at district council, and county council and parish council level. For those who work in the education fields, for those who work in the NHS or in the judiciary and in all other places. 
we're encouraged today to be praying for our media and we pray for those who work in our local media for those who work for the hearts advertiser the st albans review for radio verulam for three counties radio that they may be seekers after truth and we pray too for all christians for the many christians who work in different fields of the media that they may be able to serve you there with integrity and strengthen them in their vocations dear lord lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for ourselves as a church that you would lead us and guide us in this new season that you would be with diane and jono give them wisdom as they get to know the church for all our staff for all our volunteers for everyone who plays a part in the life of this church that they may be blessed and be a blessing to other people lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for those who are unwell or bereaved at this time and in a moment of quiet we bring them before you lord in your mercy hear our prayer and lastly we pray for ourselves that you would be with us and uphold us help us to grow stronger in our faith help us to be aware each day of our core identity as sons and daughters of the risen lord amen Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith. And take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve thee and please thee in newness of life. To the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn unto him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty <clears throat> that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this, thy table, O merciful Lord, 
trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not so worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may ever hereafter dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and his, in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank for thee, for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, good morning uh, to you uh, at the eight o'clock congregation online this morning. I didn't want you to be left out because at the 10.30 a.m. service this morning, live in person, I'm going to be interviewing our treasurer, Sandra Thompson, and together we'll be giving an update on the state of the church's finances. It's great that so many things are back up and running now, but of course, there's a cost implication to that. And we just wanted to be upfront um, and clear uh, about uh, the implications of pursuing God's call and God's vision for us as a church. So on Monday morning, we're going to be sending out a link by email to everybody in the church, yourselves included, uh, with a link uh, to that uh, uh, interview, which is going to be recorded. Uh, we do hope you'll be able to uh, watch that um, and uh, respond as the Lord uh, leads you. Uh, so God bless you. Uh, have a great week and I look forward to being with you soon. Bye for now. Yeah,